you know, it's really incredible how far we've come in understanding and, and treating HIV. Absolutely. But uh, developing a vaccine. Right. That still feels like the ultimate goal. Yeah, it really does. That holy grail of HIV research, and especially with your interest in HIV RNA testing. Yeah. You know, getting a handle on the vaccine landscape kind of adds a whole other layer. It really does. It shows just how complex HIV is. Right. And how dedicated researchers are to actually cracking this puzzle. Absolutely. And, you know, it's like we're constantly trying to outsmart this master escape artist. Oh, yeah. Who's always one step ahead. Always. Our sources for this deep dive really take us into this world of HIV vaccine trials. Okay. From those early setbacks to, you know, some of those more recent glimmers of hope. Yeah. Did you know that there are millions of HIV strains out there? It's mind boggling, isn't it? Millions. And the first major vaccine trial happened way back in the late 1990s. That's right. And that's a great place to start unpacking all of this. One of the biggest hurdles with HIV is this incredible ability to mutate oh, and create all these different strains. It's no. like trying to design a vaccine for a chameleon that's constantly changing colors. Oh, wow. I like yeah. that. Yeah. So it's not just one target we're aiming for. Yeah. It's like a whole army of shapeshifters. Exactly. No wonder this is such a tough nut to crack. It really is. And to add to the complexity, HIV also has this sneaky ability uh -oh. to evade our immune system. Okay. Think of it like the, the virus can set up these hidden camps okay. called latent reservoirs. Latent reservoir. Where it basically lies dormant mm. and goes undetected. Wow. Even our best treatments have trouble reaching it there. That's a pretty clever strategy. It is a clever strategy on the virus's part. Yeah, no wonder a vaccine has been so elusive. It really is, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay. Let's rewind a bit. Right. And walk through some of the key trials that have really shaped the field. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I'm ready for a little time travel. Where do we start? Well, our journey begins with the AIDS vax trials in the late 1990s. Okay. These were some of the first major attempts at an HIV vaccine. Right. But unfortunately, they didn't offer any protection against infection. Oh, so that must have been a huge disappointment for the researchers. It was a setback, for sure. Yeah. But it provided invaluable insights. Okay. It showed us that a simple approach just wasn't going to work. Right. We needed to think outside the box. Okay. And understand HIV's tricks a little better. Right. So onward and upward, right? Exactly. Onward and upward. What came next? Then in 2009, we had the RV144 trial in Thailand. Okay. This trial offered a real glimmer of hope. Okay. It was the first to actually demonstrate that even partial immunity to HIV was possible, yeah. showing about a 31% reduction in infection rates. Wow. It really shifted the paradigm. That is significant. Yeah. Even though it wasn't you know, complete success. Right. Yeah. It proved that a vaccine could have at least some effect. So what happened after RV144? Well, researchers got to work trying to build on that success. Yeah. They started focusing on these mosaic vaccines. Mosaic vaccines. Which aim to target multiple HIV strains at the same time. Oh. One notable example is a trial led by Dan Baruch okay. using a mosaic antigen okay. to induce what we call broadly neutralizing antibodies. Okay. These antibodies are kind of like the elite forces of the immune system. Hmm. They can recognize and neutralize a wider range of HIV strains. Ah, so it's like a multi-pronged attack against the virus. Exactly. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. What were the results of that trial? Well, while the trial proved safe, Go ahead. The efficacy was only around 14%, mm. falling short of the target for widespread use. So close, but not quite there yet. Not quite there yet. What were some of the challenges that kind of emerged from that? One of the biggest roadblocks is what we call immune correlates. Immune correlates. With other diseases. We often know exactly which immune responses are needed for protection. Right. Think of it like a map. We know the route to take to get to our destination. Yeah. But with HIV, that map is still blurry. We don't have a clear understanding of which immune responses a vaccine needs to trigger okay. for reliable protection. So it's like we're trying to build a defense system yeah. without knowing exactly what weapons we need. It's a great analogy. That sounds incredibly frustrating for researchers. It is. It's very frustrating. Yeah. And then, of course, we have those viral reservoirs we talked about earlier. Right. Even if a vaccine can initially control the virus, oh. HIV can lie dormant in these reservoirs right. and re-emerge later, potentially causing infection. So even a successful initial response doesn't necessarily guarantee long-term protection. Exactly. That's a major concern. Are there other factors contributing to these roadblocks? There are. 
Developing an HIV vaccine is not only scientifically challenging, like, but also incredibly costly. And the uncertainty of success can make it difficult to secure funding right. and support from pharmaceutical companies. So it's a combination of scientific puzzles and economic realities. Absolutely. It sounds like we're dealing with a multi-layer challenge here. We are dealing with a multi-layer challenge. So we've talked about some of those hurdles. Yes. But I'm curious about those reasons for optimism you mentioned. Yeah. What's giving researchers hope right. in this quest for an HIV vaccine? Well, for one, there are some truly innovative approaches being explored. Okay. One that comes to mind is something called vectored immunoprophylaxis. Vectored immunoprophylaxis. Yeah, it sounds complicated. It does sound a little intimidating. But it's actually pretty ingenious. So. Imagine using a harmless virus okay. as a delivery truck to bring the tools our body needs to fight HIV. So it's like using a Trojan horse to fight HIV. So it's like using a Trojan horse to sneak in our defenses. Exactly like a Trojan horse. I like it. Yeah. And then there are DNA-based vaccines, yeah. which are also showing a lot of promise. OK, how do those work? These vaccines deliver bits of HIV DNA into cells, okay. prompting the body to produce viral proteins right. that then trigger an immune response. So it's like giving our immune system a sneak peek at the enemy. Exactly. So it's ready to fight back when it encounters the real deal. Exactly. It's like a training exercise. I like that. Yeah. So are there any other developments on the horizon that you're particularly excited about? Definitely. Global collaboration is playing a crucial role. Okay. There are these initiatives like the Pre-P-Vac trial, okay. which combines vaccine testing with pre-exposure prophylaxis or pri pre p strategies. Okay. This allows researchers to study the interplay between vaccines and pre-P, okay. which could lead to more comprehensive prevention approaches. So it's not just about finding a vaccine. It's yeah. about figuring out how to best use it. Right alongside the tools we already have. Exactly. It's about a multifaceted approach. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. What about emerging technologies? Are there any that are playing a role in this research? Absolutely. You might remember the mRNA technology. Oh, yeah. That was so successful in the COVID-19 vaccines. Right. Well, researchers are now exploring how that might be applied to HIV vaccine development. That's really exciting. Um, yeah, it's very exciting. mRNA technology just seems to be revolutionizing vaccine development. It really is. So what makes it so promising for HIV? Well, mRNA vaccines can be designed and manufactured more quickly okay. than traditional vaccines, right. which is crucial when you're dealing with a virus like HIV that mutates so rapidly. Right. Plus, they have the potential to induce a very strong okay. and long-lasting immune response. So it sounds like mRNA technology could potentially overcome yeah. some of those challenges we discussed earlier. It has the potential to. But even with all this progress. Right. We still don't have a widely available HIV vaccine. Unfortunately, not yet. So what does this mean for people who are concerned about HIV? Especially, you know, those who are interested in things like HIV RNA testing. That's a great question. Yeah. And it brings us back to the importance of the work you do. Well, thank you. With the HIV RNA test guide.com podcast. Of course. While a vaccine would be a game changer, right. we can't afford to wait for it. Right. We have powerful tools available right now. Okay. Like HIV RNA testing. Right. That can drastically reduce the risk of infection. That's such an important point. Oh. You know, early detection is key. Absolutely. And knowing your status empowers you to make informed decisions about your health. Exactly. And ultimately protect yourself and others. Absolutely. And understanding those complexities of HIV vaccine research yeah. really underscores the importance of continued research. Right. Advocacy and education. It's a marathon, not a sprint, as they say. Exactly. And speaking of the big picture, yeah, I'm curious about the role of public awareness in all of this. Sure. You know, it's, it seems like we've come a long way in terms of reducing stigma around HIV, but there's still work to be done right. Absolutely. Stigma remains a significant barrier okay. to prevention, testing, and treatment. Right. You know, it prevents people from seeking the information and care they need. Right. And that can have devastating consequences. It's heartbreaking to think that people might be suffering in silence. It is. Because of fear or shame. It really is. We need to keep talking about HIV. Absolutely. We need to keep educating ourselves and others. Yeah. And we need to keep pushing for policies that actually support those affected by the virus. I completely agree. Platforms like this podcast play a vital role in that. Couldn't agree more. 
you know, by sharing knowledge right. and fostering these open conversations, yeah. it can help break down stigma and empower people to take control of their health. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here. We have. From the historical challenges of HIV vaccine development mm -hmm. to, you know, those promising new approaches on the horizon. Yeah. But what can someone listening to this right now do to make a difference? There are so many ways to get involved. Okay. One of the most important things you can do is educate yourself about HIV and AIDS. Okay. The more you know, the better equipped you'll be right. to challenge misconceptions and right. advocate for change. Knowledge is power, for sure. Absolutely. And speaking of knowledge, for those who might be feeling a little overwhelmed yeah. by all the scientific information, yeah, right. what advice would you give them? It's okay to feel overwhelmed. Yeah. HIV science is complex. Yeah. My advice would be to focus on the key takeaways. Okay. Remember that progress is being made. Right. Even if it's incremental. Okay. There are promising avenues being explored. Yeah. And while we don't have all the answers yet. Right. The dedication and ingenuity of the scientific community gives me hope. Hope is essential. It is. Especially when dealing with such a complex issue. Absolutely. And you never know. Maybe someone listening to this podcast right now. Yeah. Will be inspired to become the next HIV research superstar. That would be incredible. Yeah. Imagine the impact that one inspired individual could have. And remember, even if a career in science isn't your calling, right? there are countless other ways to contribute. Absolutely. You can volunteer your time at a local HIV AIDS organization. Yeah. You can donate to support research efforts. Right. Or simply spread awareness by talking to your friends and family about these issues. Every action, no matter how small, yeah. can make a difference. It's a collective effort. And we all have a role to play in ending this epidemic. So true. Sometimes that role is simply to listen. Right. Learn and hold space for those whose lives have been touched by HIV AIDS. Beautifully said. And to anyone listening who might be feeling alone. Yes. Please know that you're not. You are not alone. There are resources available to support you. Absolutely. And there are people who care. There are. And that brings us back to the heart of this podcast okay. and the wonderful work you do. Oh, thank you. With HIVRNATestGuide.com. This platform is a testament to the power of information and accessibility. Absolutely. Whether you're looking for testing options, right. prevention strategies, yeah. or simply want to stay informed, this resource is here for you. It's a beacon of hope. It really is. And a reminder that knowledge is our greatest weapon in the fight against HIV and AIDS. It really is a fantastic resource. Mm -hmm. So as we wrap up this deep dive into HIV vaccine research, right. I want to leave our listeners with a final thought. If you could ask HIV researchers one question, oh wow, what would it be? What's lingering in your mind after everything we've talked about? That's a great question. Um, I think I would ask them what they see as the most promising avenue for a breakthrough okay. in the next five years. Okay. Where do they see the field heading and what advancements are they most excited about? That's a fantastic question. It really gets to the heart of where the research is going right. and what we can potentially look forward to. Exactly. And it reminds us that while the journey to an HIV vaccine is ongoing, it's filled with incredible innovation and dedication. Absolutely. Well, on that note, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. It's been an incredibly enlightening conversation. It's been my pleasure. I always appreciate these opportunities to talk about this important topic. And to our listeners, thank you for joining us on this deep dive into HIV vaccine research. Remember, you can find a wealth of information and resources at HIVRNHKI.com. We encourage you to stay curious, stay informed, and stay engaged in the fight against HIV and AIDS. Together, we can make a difference.